20th annual Small Wonders exhibition. We are excited to present this show of little pieces to show that little works can have a big impact. As you know, there was no limit on theme or media, just a limit on size, where everything had to be 11 inches or smaller in all directions and including the frame. Our juror for this show was John Morell, a professor at Georgetown University, teaching all levels of drawing and painting. Morell has presented 26 solo exhibitions and has his work in the permanent collection of the Smithsonian's American Art Museum. Unfortunately, John is unable to be with us tonight, so we have a special treat. I am so happy to introduce Will Scott. Will is an art historian with an extensive career as a photographer and the former head of adult programs at the National Gallery of Art. You may be familiar with Will as he lends his time and talents to MFA as the host of Will Talks with Artists. Today, we're happy that he can fill in for John Morell to announce the award winners of Small Wonders and lead us in the discussion of the work. Will? Thank you, Anne. And it's my pleasure to be doing this. Uh, and it's my pleasure to be announcing someone else's awards because this is a large, varied, and outstanding exhibition. So I know I would have been hard pressed. Also, I'll claim a little legitimacy for my work today because I was uh, for some time an adjunct professor to Georgetown, although I was never fortunate enough to meet Professor Morell. I'm now going to read the statement uh, that he gave us to explain his process, his thought process, his uh, standards by which he judged the award winners, and then we'll announce them. Professor Morell writes, I'm impressed by the range of work among the artists that entered the show. My criteria for evaluating art is based on many different attributes. Even the most direct and simplest approach to art making yields an object that has many characteristics. I place importance on excellence of form, that is the formal qualities of composition, and on excellence of craftsmanship, the technical execution of the work. I also look at the distinctiveness of style and the creative originality of the work. The accuracy of realism or the intensity of emotional expression is also evaluated when it is at issue. Although I am a representational painter whose formative years were during the modernist 20th century, I do not believe that I have a bias towards abstraction or representational art. I evaluate postmodern approaches on how effectively they communicate their ideas to me. When entering work in an exhibition, an artist should remain true to their aesthetic vision, submitting what they see as their best work. The show's selection and judging by its very nature will be subjective. It will be the judge's views and opinion. Hopefully, my 40 years of experience as an artist and teacher will assist me in selecting an exhibition that is of high quality and reflects the artistic community at its best. And if I may express a, a slight, small personal opinion, I think uh, Professor Morell has done a wonderful job uh, even though there are many fine works that were not awarded today. We're going to commence with the honorable mentions. And the first one that we will uh, single out and announce is uh, Reflections of Perfection, a wonderful uh, small photograph by Wayne Gunther, who is a regular participant in our shows. And although I don't know how much it carries across uh, through the uh, Zoom medium, but it is truly a fascinating uh, sort of multi-layered uh, group of reflections. And uh, as a photographer, I think this is a, uh, something that I'm going to keep in the back of my mind and perhaps uh, see what I can do in a similar situation. The next honorable mention is Flight by John Verdi. And I believe I've seen John's work in other shows. And this is a very, very nice, very simple, very uh, compelling image, uh, although it's very crisply rendered and uh, realistic in that sense, it also plays with that boundary between abstraction and realism. Um, Again, I'm not sure how much uh, viewers can see, but this is an owl uh, flying towards the lens. Certainly makes one wonder 
where it came from when we see the window beside it. So it's a very clever image, I think, as well as uh, quite a beautiful image. Eva Lambert's rooftop is uh, quite a fascinating small painting, which uh, uses the perspective and the vantage point to really thrust the eye of the viewer back through the opening in these uh, evergreens across the water towards the horizon and into the clouds above. So uh, the palette closely related blues and uh, deep greens and even grays is very subtle and beautiful in its own right. But this really dramatic thrust into distant space is countered by the verticality of the trees in a way that creates a very dynamic composition, although it's also very quiet and restful uh, in part because of the palette. This uh, very small, uh, it is quite brilliant because of the arrangement of shadows of these trees. Uh, and of course, uh, the portal, which is the title, is that bright red door. Uh, so again, the artist with this small scale has created quite a sense of space. Uh, and the door, small though it is, even within the surface area of this image, of course, pulls you immediately towards it. So it's quite a powerful image, despite its small size. Now I am finding, I have to say, as we go along, that I can't help myself but to comment. Uh, I don't think just saying the name and pointing out the work is going to be uh, terribly interesting, although it is the way that we're uh, letting everybody know our award winners this afternoon. Um, as a photographer myself, I find that one of the intrig intriguing things about this uh, wonderful small composition uh, with the silhouettes and then the bright colors of what these uh, individuals seem to be looking at is uh, itself quite compelling, but it's a little photograph by Richard Green uh, on an aluminum surface. Uh, this is something as a photographer I've not utilized very much because I couldn't find a way, I wasn't creative enough to make it so striking uh, and utilize that reflective surface and that hard surface uh, as uh, Mr. Green has done. Uh, a brilliant little piece, another one of the honorable mentions. I never really uh, studied the studio arts uh, at all. I learned to be a photographer uh, more or less on my own uh, much later in life. But I've always been fascinated by uh, how painters, uh, particularly when they're working on a small scale, can fill a small canvas like this one uh, by David La Palombra Barra, Palombara. I, with such a sense of uh, vitality and naturalness. I, there are a number of uh, artists in the show that have been able to do the same thing uh, using uh, paint. And uh, in this case, it's oil on a hardwood panel and yet still has so much uh, vitality and naturalness in a small composition like this. And the title of this is Rama Island. Do we have any idea where Rum Island is? Um, I don't know where Rum Island is, but I believe David is on the line if he wants to weigh in. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Rum Island is uh, on Long Pond, which is on Mount Desert, Mount Desert Island, which is essentially adjacent to Acadia National Park. Exactly. And, and as somebody who spends uh, some time most summers in far western Maine, in Lovell, near Freiburg, uh, you really have this sense of the rocky shore and the uh, evergreen trees and the rippling mm -hmm. waters. Uh, you know, this makes me want to go back. <laughs> it's a wonderful uh, piece. Our next honorable mention by uh, David Richards is uh, titled Tuscan Shadow. And for all of us who have been any place around the Mediterranean, uh, Tuscany, uh, Spain, Portugal, Italy, uh, France, all of those places uh, know how the whitewashed or stone uh, buildings and the uh, pathways can be so intensely sunlit 
uh, with that Mediterranean light and the shadows then acquire a certain kind of drama by that intense contrast between light and shadow. And this is just such a quiet, small, intimate piece where I think in this case, I would say uh, the artist uh, David Richards has utilized the small scale in a way to enhance the intimacy uh, and perhaps evoke memories of those who have visited these places. I know it does that for me. We're now going to mention our uh, jurist choice pieces. Is unfortunately not in the galleries due to a difficulty with the shipping agent. Uh, but this is a piece by an artist that I have uh, talked with uh, and in a very fascinating conversation during one of my will talks, Ed uh, Schumann's uh, from South Carolina, uh, a wonderful photographer who's done many things that uh, I've looked at and talked about with him and uh, very much admire. So in this particular case, the curve, which you're all looking at, of course, uh, references the composition, but I think that uh, that uh, sunset glow or that glow of the natural light that has given a golden patina to the things that are represented within the photograph uh, is quite wonderfully uh, and evocatively handled. So uh, congratulations to Ed uh, for receiving a juror's choice for uh, this exhibition. Thank you. The last piece that uh, we're gonna to mention today and share with you is the other juror's choice. Uh, Professor Morell, as you can see, awarded a number of uh, honorable mentions and singled out Ed's piece and this piece by Rachel Frazier called Lagoon. And uh, in this case, it is a small watercolor, uh, at, like all the pieces in the show, necessarily diminutive, but uh, this time, I think it's another one of those occasions, like the piece that we looked at a few moments ago, where the artist has really taken what some might consider to be kind of restrictive, you know, forcing them into this smaller format, but has still filled the uh, composition with so much color, and so much light, and so much atmosphere that even at this small physical size, it is almost as though you're standing there in the midst of nature, enjoying the view that the artist has selected. So uh, I just have to say in conclusion that uh, I think Professor Morell has done a wonderful job. And, you know, as a, a pedant, if you will, as an academic, he did what he said he was going to do 100%. And so I think this is a very concise juror statement that I would recommend everybody uh, who's a participating artist or a listener viewer would read again and take to heart. So thank you for joining us this evening. Yes, we hope everybody enjoys the rest of their Sunday. Um, I just wanted to take a brief moment and open it up to the artists um, to see whether anybody had anything to say online um, about the show. We wanna thank everybody for, for submitting their work um, and for being part of our show here and part of the Maryland Federation of Art. Um, but we'll go ahead and open up the lines if anybody wants to uh, have a question or make a comment. Well, well, thank you for this amazing show and theme. I, I found it very challenging and fun to work so small. So I, I think it's wonderful how the Mar Maryland Federation of Art has such creative themes and ideas for, for pushing artists to try new things. Thank you so much, Rachel. And thanks for being part of our show. Thank you so much. Everyone's art is so amazing. Hi, this is, uh, this is John Verdi. And I did want to uh, <clears throat> thank you all for having the show. I was the one who did the owl and the, uh, the wall with the window. I just wanted to be sure everybody knows the owl is painted on the wall. <laughs> oh. Hopefully it's not obvious. <laughs> no, not at all. Because Will, Will said it makes you wonder where did it come from, the wall behind and the window? Well, it's, it's a very nice uh, painting. It was, uh, I found it in Munich uh, last summer. So I, I, at first I thought, it, well, I didn't really think it was an owl because it wasn't moving. <laughs> well, thank you, John, for that um, explanation. <laughs> it's magical.
well, thank you all for listening in, and I hope everybody uh, thought that I did justice to the works and to the juror's statement. Uh, but I'd also like to just mention that as a participating artist and as a board member of the MFA, I've been participating in the show for a number of years. And while the shows have always been wonderful, I really do think this is the most diverse and uh, has the highest overall level of really outstanding work of any of the shows that I've seen since I've been associated with the MFA. So I would like to congratulate all the participating artists for their wonderful work and their inclusion in the show. Thank you. And with that, we'll say good night, everybody. Thanks so much. Have a great evening.